I focus a lot on uh, you know kind of healthcare technology transactions, both in the M and A space as well as uh, you know in co-development, uh, you know joint ventures, partnerships, uh, you know co-sponsorships of uh, studies with. Uh, technology companies between J and J and technology companies. So that's that's usually my field of operations. Talking about the sort of analysis that goes into build versus buy, right? What are some of the things that you know um, the company is considering in that at that point, whether they decide to go with build or buy? I think there are a few, uh, you know, kind of guideposts that you know, strategic acquires look for. One is like, if the, if the target has some traction with, within the uh, target, uh, within the customer base, then, you know, kind of, especially if it's a complementary customer base, then, uh, you know, what kind of traction it has with customers. Second, uh, you know, what would be the potential if it was onboarded onto the acquirer's platforms or integrated with the with the acquirer's infrastructure uh, or sales network, so that's 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 another thing that they look at. The third thing they look at is the uh, commitment of the existing management team and existing people at the at the target company. Like, are they are they going to just sell the company and scram? Or, or are they kind of, you know, ready to kind of, you know, stick around post acquisition to help with not just with the transitioning, but actually taking the target company's products to the next level. And, and if the executive team and, and people at the target company are ready to be around to even play a bigger role than just kind of, you know, scaling up their uh, product once it's part of the acquirer's portfolio, then so much the better. Like especially if they are ready to play sort of the role of certain domain experts. Let's say, for example, uh, you know, to help the acquirer build out more, like you know, uh, you know, kind of neural network algorithms or more AI capabilities. That's that's where that's what really gets acquirers excited about a strategic target. So like the commitment and vision of the executive team and slash management team actually really matters then. Oh, absolutely. Without, without any doubt. Yeah. And you'll also see a lot of, and maybe this might be a segue into one of your other questions, but uh, it might also mean that you, you'll have these deals where you know, like which have pretty deep milestones as well, payout milestones. So they could stretch over out to like, you know, one and a half to two years, uh, depending on certain uh, performances of the of the target. So that's that should not come as a surprise uh, that really what it's not so much the monetary uh, value that's attached to those milestones. It's more about like sort of a checkpoint on the commitment of the of the executive team and the key people at the target, whether they are ready to kind of stick around and and actually you know perform even under the auspices of the strategic acquirer. Speaking about relationships, right? So I know that questions asked from some of uh, startups and emerging companies about you know in your position as a strategic buyer. Do you have a preference or um, uh, or what would you like to see in terms of the startup um, having either like very deep commercial relationships with uh, f uh, sort of fewer commercial players or having a broader sort of like network of commercial players that they're dealing with? You know, obviously, if they have a broader network, right, it's more likely that perhaps there may be a competitor of the strategic buyer included in that wider sort of reach. Uh, do you have a view on that? That's a great question. And yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I, I, I don't have a one size fits all answer. It really depends 
on the innovative aspects around the product that the that the target has come up with uh, and, and, the, and the kind of domain that it's kind of, you know, staked out its uh, place in. It's, I mean, by and large, it would, you know, kind of strategic acquirers don't like targets that have that have a very broad base within the industry because they they know that you know once acquired a lot of these competitors are going to scram they are just going to find alternatives they would rather not continue using the products of the uh, of the target right so if if a lot of the targets revenues or if the primary revenue driver for the target is dependent on other industry players, uh, competitors of the strategic acquirer. I think, I think that that definitely is a minus point. But on the other hand, if you've got a couple of, uh, you know, the target kind of working with a couple of industry competitors, but not like broadly with a lot of industry competitors, that is actually like that would be actually quite attractive for the strategic acquirer just because you know like acquiring the company might upset the plans of you know one or two of their competitors so it's 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 a it's a real tightrope walk you know like you, you want to also show that you are like you know for a target that it is relevant in that industry and it is sort of creating a niche for itself in that industry but at the same time not become so broad based so ubiquitous across the entire industry that you cannot excite you know one industry player to kind of you know swoop in and uh, you know buy you out so it's 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 interesting but yeah i mean now, now it, again it also depends on the product as well right like so if it's if it's a if it's a product which is you know aimed at that particular industry and you know it's it's really the industry players are the ultimate consumers of that particular product then you know you're not going to uh, you know have a lot of acquisition opportunities from that particular industry like let's say for example um, uh, electronic health record uh, the ehr industry the vertical right so you know if if you are one of a, a bit player and you have your own EHR platform, you know, you, you cannot be looking at hospitals, you know, to, to acquire you, right? Because, you know, you're going to, by, by your very definition, you're going to be working across as many different hospital networks as possible. So the hospitals are cannot be your potential uh, acquirers. It would have to be other EHR players who are interested, who you want to kind of, you know, get interested in, in, in you. What ways have you seen a deal structured such as, you know, it maximizes the value of the target, you know, in the eyes of a um, strategic buyer, you know, things you've seen or heard uh, in the industry that have really, you know, where the target has really done a really good job of positioning itself for the maximum sort of like consideration? Yeah, I think a couple of things come to mind, maybe two or three things actually. One is of course, uh, you know, going back to one of my previous responses where the executive team has set itself up as domain experts in their area of operation in that particular vertical. Uh, the second is making more than one suitor interested in them right like sort of creating that sort of healthy competition between a couple of potential strategic acquirers um, and the third is you know having their house in order uh, to a large extent right not uh, ensuring that there are no major surprises that come out of due diligence uh, making sure that you know kind of generally their house is in order in terms of finances in terms of their uh, you know, legal uh, requirements and legal filings and stuff like that. And and I think yet another point is, you know, that, that the product or, or, the, or, the, or the pipeline of products that they have 
uh, they are not just in exploratory phase or they are not just in development phase, but they have actually gone out in the marketplace and have received some healthy traction in the marketplace. So these are a few things to keep in mind as kind of as companies look to uh, attract potential strategic acquirers. There are some sort of things that an emerging company or a target can do to stay in touch with some of uh, the big um, sort of potential acquirers in the industry. I, I think they uh, they can do a few things for sure. I mean, I think one would be, uh, you know, uh, and kind of doing a joint study with uh, with one or more players in that industry, so that you know they can actually show their chops, uh, you know, in action. So that mm, I think in a that's low risk, a one yeah. And it's sort of in a low risk environment too, right? Oh, right, exactly, like right. A shared I mean, yeah. kind of thing, right. yeah. Yeah, totally, right. I mean, that's how they you, they can they can exhibit their chops and you know show uh, you know larger industry players like you know that 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 in terms of you know deep domain understanding you know they are as capable if not more cap capable, right? The other thing they can also do is uh, you know open up you know, kind of opportunities for, uh, you know, strategic acquirers with respect, you know, at a particular, uh, with respect to a particular customer or, or a customer category, right? Like, for example, if you have a large uh, potential acquirer too, which do not serve a particular, a, a specific market segment, uh, but they are interested in it, and if this strategic target is able to get them to, to have a look into the potential of that market segment or 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 you know kind of or that sub vertical i think i think that would count a lot as well so there are a few of these things that that they can do uh, i i i think just kind of you know uh, you know meeting up at uh, you know, conventions and exhibitions and, you know, kind of just being in touch with, with some executives, I, I don't think is, is enough anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. they really have to show their chops and, and I think they have to look for opportunities to be able to do that, uh, whether it's opening up a, a, a new market segment for the potential acquirers or doing a joint study or you know, in some ways, uh, being a strategic uh, partner as well, like, you know, like telling the, uh, you know, uh, potential acquirer that you don't have to worry about helping out customers in this particular domain. We we can come in and, and help cover that domain for you and then actually delivering or even over delivering on their promises. I think those are some of the ways that uh, that that target should look at uh, in terms of you know uh, creating that interest creating that buzz around them and that stickiness yeah that stickiness as well right so it's definitely i guess a sense of collaboration then right like creating a strong collaboration uh relationship of collaboration between uh, both the strategic potential strategic buyer and potential target i think one of the one of the biggest takeaways that that I hope you know potential targets take away from this is 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 time is of the essence. They've got to be really fast. Like once they you know kind of strategize on a particular uh, like a like a, a opportunity, and they know that a a, a specific uh, potential acquirer will be really interested. They've got to move fast and execute fast. I mean, I've seen umpteen examples of where, uh, you know, targets kind of, uh, you know, they, they have a good opportunity, but they either get lost in the weeds of the operations or, or in legalese or in terms of, you know, financial, uh, you know, checking out the financials of, a potential uh, opportunity that to to work together, uh, you know, with a strategic acquirer, 
that they kind of lose sense they, they lose that opportunity because the, the th one thing that you know kind of uh, strategic targets need to understand is the budget cycles at these potential acquirers these budget cycles can can change they certainly change in the beginning of the year but they also have a propensity to change in the middle of a year as well so they do not want to get caught uh, you know, on the wrong side of that budget budget changes or those budget cycles, and and that's that's really critical to understand. They have an opportunity, you know, they they should not get over ambitious with that opportunity. Just 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 go in and and uh, you know try to wrap it up in as less time as possible. So actually prolonging the deal process right for um, what you're saying for minimum sort of advantage to them as the target you're at risk of losing the whole deal in the process absolutely correct yeah yeah and you know these budget cycles are really brutal like and and, and there's nothing even if even if even if the target has you know like the the, the senior most possible executive sponsorship uh, you know, with a potential acquirer, if the budget cycles change, if the potential acquirer suddenly gets mired in some long drawn or very costly litigation, or you know, if if they face setbacks in a particular market or a, or a geography, you know, any of these things can upset uh, you know budget cycles, and and we've seen that, right? I mean, we are living through times where. You know, nobody thought that, you know, we would have, uh, you know, back in February of 2020, I think we had the lowest employment rate, uh, you know, on record. And then within a month, like literally like a month, we, we, we are now, uh, we went into a situation where we were beginning to grapple with, uh, you know, one of the highest employment, unemployment rates, right? So it just kind of, I think more than anything else, I think this time, you know this this particular time that we are living through tells us how important it is to move quickly and to uh, you know stitch up things and to wrap up things in real quick time